The teachers told me that they had brought in one of their former colleagues. She was a child behavior psychologist. They had brought her in and she had observed my son and come to the conclusion that it was very possible he had Asperger's syndrome. And I was shocked. My son spoke. My son um, was um, physically capable. Uh, there were a lot of things that I, I just didn't see. And suddenly, I started to realize what she was pointing out. He was a different kid, but I never thought of that as autism. And she suggested that I have him evaluated by one of the state educational networks. So we did, and they said that possibly there were some sensory issues, but that was it. And that's what we decided to accept as, 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 as the answer. However, um, a couple years later, we realized that something was missed. It was missed. It took a while. And suddenly we find ourselves two years later in a classroom and they hit it. Those educators noticed it. They noticed it. They didn't just leave us to our own devices. They helped us. So we know that about 42% of children under the age of five, and we look at employed moms, uh, obviously we're talking about either one parent home or two parent homes where both parents are working. Uh, so 42% of the children under the age of five spend at least 35 hours a week with a childcare provider. It gets more than that when we're talking about full-time employed moms. So some moms are obviously doing shift time or home time, but if mom is employed full-time, then over 50% of those children are in a childcare setting. I'm Dr. Lara Grutmeyer. I'm the Division Director for Child Development here at Redlands Community College. We do higher education training for child care providers. Um, I think one of the things that's most important um, when it comes to quality child care is the background of the child care providers. Back in the day when my mother had children, her mother lived close by and could ask for all kinds of advice. And nowadays, a lot of times, the child care provider is not only the caretaker of the children, but also the one who helps parenting skills and avenues with the parents themselves. So child care providers need educational backgrounds to help them to better understand child development. That transcribes into much better child care in the child care setting. We also look at um, how high of a level is the teacher education. That's a key component in quality child care. We also look at uh, child to teacher ratios. The fewer children per teacher, the better probably the interaction is going to be. And the last one uh, that's so important to me is good teacher wages. Unfortunately, this is not a profession that is highly paid. Most people are here because they want to be here. Um, I always think it's ironic that a lot of times you have a higher car payment than you have a childcare bill. Uh, and I always like families to look at that and say, where exactly is your priority? The key piece of the puzzle, I think, is we're looking for quality environment, cognitive development that's very enriching, but to me the most important part is that child care provider. Our mission is to provide a safe, healthy, loving learning environment for children where they can come and learn and grow developmentally and their parents can feel comfortable dropping their children off um, in a safe environment with um, professionals who are working towards ed educating their child, the whole child, 
physically, emotionally, intellectually, um, to set a stage for lifelong learners. I want my teachers to um, be considered professionals. We're not just babysitters. Um, when parents drop their children off here, we have a variety of different learning areas. So they're learning throughout the day. Even when their the parents think that they're just playing, the, the classrooms are set up in different learning centers. Math, science, reading, dramatic play, the block area, art area you know, small motor skills they work on, their large motor skills. We work on all those different aspects. And when they're in the facility, even when just, I mean, when a parent or somebody walks in and thinks, oh, they're just playing, they're not just playing. Just as sitting in, at the table as something as simple as having snack with two-year-olds, we sit down at the table with them and have snack with them. And the whole time that we're having snack, it may just look like that we're having snack, but those teachers are building those children's vocabulary um, and asking them all kinds of questions. And, and for a two-year-old, to, to, that's so important to make sure that their vocabulary is where it needs to be um, because that affects their behavior um, and their social skills and everything. So just sitting at the table or the teacher sitting in the floor with them when somebody might think we're just playing with them or eating snack, they're, the teacher knows that that's not just what they're doing, that they're really making a difference in teaching the child all these different kinds of words and things that their parent wouldn't realize that, that we're doing. We as child care providers provide an environment into which they can openly learn during free play in our centers and in our learning centers that we have. Um, take, for example, if they're doing a puzzle, we're doing a big floor puzzle together and we're trying to figure out where that one piece might go or if we're trying to count to see how many blocks we can get that high on on the sh up against the wall as we're building without them knocking them over or something like that. My number one goal is to at least make them feel that they are loved and nurtured and also maybe to walk away that day with learning something, just one thing new that day. These women were educated. They were trained so well. And as a unit, the, the entire staff, they were always having uh, meetings, they were having seminars, they were having continuing education on how to be a better educator, but they were also being trained on how to recognize sensory disorders and autism spectrum disorders. And I wish now that I had taken more time to thank them for the role that they played in that moment because that moment changed us forever. And it was such a big moment, I think I was speechless, to be honest. Um, I wish I had told them how much it meant to me. You know, it was just... Um, such a different world for us all of a sudden, but these two people who took the time to talk to us and to notice things, you know, I don't know if educators get enough credit for the investment that they take personally in each child. 